Hi, welcome back to Bork. My name is Johnny and today I'm talking about tech. Specifically, I'll be talking about innovative and interesting technologies uh, that I've stumbled across uh, that are able to kind of tackle climate change, reduce emissions, uh, make the world a better place. Uh, I'm going to be looking through a few, a few technologies that claim to do that and I'll basically be figuring out uh, whether they're a load of crap or whether they could actually uh, make a useful contribution uh, to slashing emissions and decarbonisation. So here we go. So we hear a lot about climate change, uh, but the truth is a lot of the things we do without even thinking about it actually contribute to emissions being pumped out into the environment. It's not just cars and power stations pumping out carbon dioxide or methane. It's everything we do in our life, really, whether that's diet or the clothes we wear or the way we cook our food. All of it actually contributes uh, to this problem that we're creating in the planet. So, yeah, today I'll be looking at some relatively futuristic inventions that could help us tackle global warming in our day to day lives. Most of us cook every day, some better than others. And and uh, ovens use gas, hobs and microwaves use electricity, and even barbecues use coal if you're doing that in the summer. Uh, however, the Go Sun grill, as it's named, is powered using sunlight. So reflectors focus the sun's light rays onto a metal tube, uh, and that actually creates temperatures of up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Not sure why I've done my research in Fahrenheit, uh, considering it's 2019 and we're in the UK, but oh well, we'll roll with it. And this means it can cut down on the smoke uh, from a small disposable grill, so that's not going into the atmosphere. And it also reduces the risk of fires happening, so better for the environment and safer. Because the sun's shining on this metal tube, the barbecue somehow intensifies that sunlight, and your food, your steak or your chicken or your vegetables, if you're being extra environmentally friendly, uh, are inside the tube, and the sun's temperature actually heats that up. Uh, so I think this is pretty good. It's basically using solar energy directly rather than uh, using gas or, you know, like I said, the gas creates the flames on your barbecue if you have the big canister. Uh, you have a coal barbecue, which is obviously if coal's a fossil fuel, so that's getting burnt going into the environment. And yeah, obviously on a barbecue as well, you're cooking meat, so meat's not very environmentally friendly. So if you're cooking it using fossil fuels, that's kind of like a double whammy uh, for your carbon footprint there, not very good. But at least if you're cooking on a solar oven, uh, I guess you can kind of half, roughly half, the damage that you're gonna do there. Um, so yeah, I think this solar oven is actually a pretty good idea. Obviously in England you need the sun uh, for it to work. Uh, England's not always sunny, so I'm not sure if that's going to work in every country, but I guess if you're in California and you like having barbecues, this is probably well suited to you. If you live in uh, Siberia uh, and you want to like grill your seal or salmon or whatever you're eating out there, maybe not so effective because you don't have any sun. But I could see myself using one. I think they're relative, you know, it's like any of these new technologies. Until they're widely adopted, they're all going to be relatively expensive. But if uh, the developers are watching this video, feel free to send me one. I'll trial it for you. If I'm having a barbecue or something in Hyde Park, or I would definitely use one of these barbecues rather than coal, because I think it's better for the planet and safer. And uh, continuing this outside theme, I would actually love to have a caravan or a van in the future and go traveling. But this brings me on to my next uh, technology I'm going to talk about, which is catchily named an eco capsule. So it's a capsule that is eco. Well done. Uh, and it's basically a greener way that you could live out in the wild or, you know, have the caravan experience or mobile home experience. Uh, it's a more eco-friendly way you can do that. Yeah, so it would definitely offer a greener way to go camping. It's basically a micro housing pod, uh, able to house two people for up to a year, make sure you get on with them. Uh, and it has all the necessary amenities like a kitchen, bathroom, storage space. Uh, but the difference is, obviously your caravan is probably running off the mains if you're in a campsite or something like that. But this actually has solar cells and a wind turbine, uh, so it can generate its own power. It has a battery, I believe, so you can store that power. And it even has a filter for drinking water. So you can be pretty self-sufficient living in this thing. Uh, I'm not sure why its lifespan is limited to a year. Maybe it all falls apart after then, but maybe that's just when the batteries and the panels need replacing. I'm not sure. So yeah, I'm 100% down for the eco capsule. Uh, I, the only problem is I'd need to find someone willing to live with me in a small enclosed space for a year. That could be difficult. And of course, there's the price tag, which is $100,000. So at the moment, uh, yeah, that's slightly out of my price range, but I don't know. If you keep watching the Bork videos, maybe we'll be earning that money soon enough. So uh, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, follow us, help me monetize this thing. If you do stick with the traditional tent or caravan, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you can actually use our next piece of technology, which is called the Hydrolite Lantern. And it's an eco-friendly alternative to traditional gas-lit lanterns, 
don't know who uses gas lit lanterns anymore. I use uh, just a normal torch. Uh, but obviously even a normal torch needs batteries, which aren't always the most environmentally friendly thing to be using and like draining with a powerful torch and then buying new ones and so on. So this new lantern basically runs on salt water and a simple energy cell that you don't need to replace all the time. And it uses charged particles in the water. Uh, to create electricity, which sounds kind of like magic, but I'm trusting them on this one. Uh, apparently it's very simple to use. You just dip it in the salt water when it's out of power uh, and it can give off 250 hours of light. So I guess that's particularly useful if you're camping by the sea, by a reservoir, uh, next to a bath, on a boat, uh, sewage treatment plant, anywhere else where you have lots of water, uh, that's gonna be pretty useful. So I'm down uh, again for the light, that gets a thumbs up from me, because yeah, traditional lead acid batteries, not great for the environment. So now for something a bit more futuristic and larger scale actually, I think. It's called the Smart Flower. So it looks like a flower, kind of a robot flower, um, but yeah, it tracks the sun, so it gets more sun than solar panels. I think 40% more than traditional stationary ones, which obviously just point in one direction. It mimics the way plants actually absorb solar energy. And you can imagine this is quite expensive bit of kit. Uh, this robot that tracks the sun and generates solar energy, it's pretty complicated. Don't want anyone smashing it up on the way home from the pub. Uh, so very cleverly, the flower kind of closes in with its petals uh, after dark so that the expensive solar panels are protected and you don't get pigeons like crapping on them and nesting in them and people throwing bottles of Carlsberg at them. So yeah, I think that's a very good design. Personally, for me, again, it's out of my budget uh, because I think this is probably better suited to like an office block or something like that. So you can have a few of them outside um, and basically show off how green your business is and they look quite cool, they're like sculptures. But there's a lot of moving parts, they're very expensive. I'm not gonna maintain my flower, can't afford it in the first place. So not for me, but I think if you've got a company or something like that, an office uh, with a bit of empty space outside in between the benches, get one of these. Okay, so on a slightly larger scale in terms of solar, uh, you might not know it, but the UK has one of the largest floating solar farms in Europe. It's located in the Queen Elizabeth II Reservoir, um, which sounds very posh. And not only does it take up unused space, uh, because obviously a lot of solar plants take up quite a lot of the countryside and farmers say, oh, it's blocking my field. You know, that's, I don't agree with that personally, but that's one criticism of solar plants and wind, far, wind turbines is that these renewable energies take up the countryside. But obviously if you stick it on a lake, not much is happening on top of a lake. So tell the, I don't know, uh, water skiers or whatever uh, to watch out for them. But it's on top of the lake and it can actually generate more electricity than a standard solar farm. Uh, just because I think the water's reflective, for one, so that can create more light shining around. And obviously it cools down the panels as well because you've basically got the water of the lake acting as a heat sink, uh, which can improve the efficiency of the panels. So, yeah, there's lots of floating, floating solar plants out there. Uh, the, the one, this massive one, uh, on the Queen Elizabeth II lake is particularly impressive, I think. But yeah, I think it's a great technology. Why not? Why not stick them on a lake? So turbulent hydro is another technology. It basically uh, works like a whirlpool turbine that generates power uh, using one turbine or a whole network. And it's designed to be durable and low maintenance. So you can, the company says you can buy one of these, uh, put it in place, and it basically redirects water flow if you live next to a river or something like that through a turbine that creates electricity. And obviously that's pretty environmentally friendly because all you're doing is relying on the gravity flowing through the turbine, uh, the gravity carrying the water that is through the turbine, rather than you know burning fossil fuels. And it generates electricity 24 hours a day because rivers flow the whole time. Uh, there's no flood risk and it's even safe for fish to pass through. So it doesn't mince them up, uh, turn them into canned tuna or anything like that. Uh, the fish can survive, it doesn't affect the river, supposedly. It seems again to me like quite a good option. Guessing it's expensive uh, if you want to get one installed for your house, but you never know. Imagine there's a small village or something like that uh, that you know wants to either go renewable or just get energy access, even if it's in like a, you know a country like Nepal or something, a, a mountainous country where there might be rivers flowing down and the energy access isn't that great. You never know, a village could club together, buy one of these turbines, have it by the city hall or the town hall or whatever, and that could generate electricity for lots of people in the village. So it's a good way to improve energy access, I feel, and in countries that do have energy access, I think it's a good way to decarbonise because if a town's using a certain amount of power each year, um, you could basically just have one of these sat by the river and a certain part of the energy could be generated by that that would feed into a battery. Don't know if you want to swim through it, uh, but I don't know, give it a go. Yep, so that one, thumbs up from me. I think that turbine's pretty good. 
Uh, I'm not sure how it actually works uh, for fish to be able to swim through it, but it might work like this next piece of technology that we've got coming up, which is a bladeless wind turbine. So this bladeless turbine mimics a hummingbird's wings. So it's called the tire wind converter. It uses a flapping motion instead of a rotating motion, uh, which means it's not as powerful as bladed turbines, but it's more suitable to being made in a smaller size. Uh, and this means that you can actually have it in populated areas because, you know, a lot of the wind turbines across the UK and the rest of the world, uh, onshore wind turbines, are out in the countryside, massive, massive turbines on the tops of hills and so on. Uh, and that's great because, you know, there's lots of wind there and they generate electricity that can be sent to cities and so on. But it's also useful for settlements to generate their own power, I think. Uh, so if you have this, which works like wings, it's not going to create all that air disturbance that massive wind turbines are going to cause, and it's not so big. You can have it much more safely and cost-effectively in the middle of a city, which, yeah, I think as we're moving towards renewables, it's important to kind of, you know, not have them all out at sea or in the countryside, but kind of bring them into our areas and get people used to it. I think the more we see wind turbines and things like that, on our day-to-day -day life, the more conscious we become of the energy that we're using uh, and how it's generated. So the only drawback, I think, about this bladeless wind turbine, uh, much like that plant machine earlier that tracks the sun to generate solar energy, is it has a lot of moving parts. Uh, it could break and it could easily be vandalised in a city like London, uh, where people don't really always like nice things like that. So that's the only drawback. But I think it's a great idea. And yeah, if they were put on the, the roof of an office building or something like that, uh, out of reach of the public, I think that could be a good step towards generating more renewables. So, so thank you for watching this video. Uh, please comment below and tell me what you think of these inventions, because of course you might not agree, you might think they're awful ideas. Uh, and yeah, let me know if there's any inventions that you like uh, that I might have missed out on. And maybe we can talk about those next time or we can talk about it in the comments. Uh, so please tell me, uh, like, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Uh, honesty is always the best policy, especially at Bork. Uh, and yeah, and yeah, my final plea, uh, I would love to have some of these technologies in my garden. I'd like to have the bladeless wind turbine on the roof. I'd like to have my eco mobile home. I'd like to have my flask, but I can't afford any of them. So like I said, please help me on my journey uh, towards affording some of these. So get involved, like the video. Thank you.